Welcome to an introduction to Management Cybernetics, the science of effective organization. Organization. Let's start by asking the question, who wrote the book on how to organize? Amazingly, the way most businesses organize all over the world is a design that comes from Aristotle. He is the creator of the non-contradiction principle that says that something cannot be two things at the same time. It has prevailed as the process for acquiring knowledge. It looks like this. Also from Aristotle, we get the process of reason and the syllogism. Theology is built following the same process. The Catholic Church borrows from the same source. Eventually, kingdoms and businesses find the same solution. When the pyramid structure is transferred to business, we get a typical organization chart that looks like this. Here are other examples. All these are typically authoritarian structures. They make horizontal communication difficult. Orders travel vertically downwards and obedience travels upwards. They all work well as a structure for apportioning blame. Many bosses follow the same rule, the golden rule. The man with the gold makes the rules. Employees are only familiar with their very small area. No wonder they don't know what's going on. This is the way business schools teach how to organize a business. It starts from the top. Decide the objective, make the plan, organize, execute, supervise. Stafford Beer, the founder of Management Cybernetics, has found another way. It will work much better in highly complex situations. It is the way nature is organized. From the bottom up, like evolution, starting with bacteria and ending with the human being. From the simple to the complex, like one layer on top of another. Like the brain and the human nervous system. Nature's strategy is repetitive, or to use the right term, recursive. The same process is repeated over and over cells, tissues, organs, body. The mapping looks like this, where the parts, the smaller operations, and the whole look exactly alike. I will explain this. It is called the viable system model, and it works for any living thing with the capacity to have an independent existence. It works starting at the operation level. Several operations create a process or another operation. Then these operations need coordination, auditing, direction, planning, and an identity of their own. The only trick of the viable system model is that the same recipe is repeated for every operation. You have identity, planning, direction, audit, coordination within every operation. You can therefore isolate every operation, every process, to examine the exchanges of materials, money, machinery, and men with its immediate environment, which is part of the viable system and is shown here colored green as an amoeba shape. The reason for separating the management from the operation is because information processing is very different from processing materials and energy. Information is the key to having control, and thus the key of management also. The type of business is irrelevant. The content of what is being managed is not of primary importance either. The common stuff underlying every management problem is the inherent complexity of the system being managed. Unraveling complexity is the true challenge facing managers all over the world. The viable system model has many advantages over the organization chart. All the communication lines are clear. 
It allows for maximum desirable autonomy of the operations. It allows every person working in the organization to know exactly where they stand. It is a holistic and systemic approach. It works for any type of organization, not only businesses. Remarkably, the constitutional organization of the United States follows the viable system model, not a typical organization chart. Gary Hamill, management guru from Harvard, has said, In struggling to embrace the inherent paradox between the relentless pursuit of efficiency and the restless exploration of new strategic options, managers can learn something from constitutional democracies, particularly the United States. Over more than two centuries, America has proven itself to be far more resilient than the companies it has spawned. At the heart of the American experiment is a paradox, unity and diversity, a single nation peopled by all nations. To be sure, it is not easy to steer course between divisive sectarism and totalitarian conformity, but the fact that America has managed to do this, despite some sad lapses, should give courage to managers trying to square the demands of penny-pinching efficiency and break-the-rules innovation. Maybe, just maybe, all those accountants and engineers, never great fans of paradox, can learn to love the heretics and the dreamers.